All right, so I said to a lot of you in the comment section down below after the video where I reviewed this speaker that I would actually pull it apart and try and repair the issue because if you remember, it fell onto concrete and funnily enough, it actually fell. I, was, I remember where I put it because I could actually see the marks. It came off the bench, which is probably like 1600 millimeters, so 1.6 meters off the ground. It fell down onto the other bench, which is probably maybe a 600 mil drop down, and then it further 900 onto the concrete. And that's when I think it took the big blow up here on the corner, which is actually what stopped it from working. So again, like I said, all you gotta do is pl uh, pry here underneath the DOS logo. I've done this probably three or four times now, so this is becoming easier. However, it was pretty easy just at the start as well. So you just wanna work your way around the grill just like this. I also want you to let me know what the video quality is like. I'm filming this on my phone right now instead of on my normal cameras because, well, I just wanted to test out my phone camera uh, because why not? I just wanna see what this thing looks like in my room. So we've got the grill. It's really, really easy to get off. Um, just simply lifts up like that. Again, that foam on the back, you can see that mine, it does seem to be glued down. I can't like pull it off. I can't lift it up anywhere. It's pretty well stuck on there. So that's not going anywhere. And then here are the drivers. So again, we have these two, which are the full range drivers on the left and the right here. And then the subwoofer in the middle and two passive radiators here. So if we see if I push on these passive radiators, that woofer hardly moves, indicating that the box is not at all airtight. Generally, what would happen if this is an airtight box is I'd press like that, the woofer would go up, and then maybe over the course of about four or five seconds, the woofer would slowly drop back down. Take and normally test with any sort of sealed box is push on it, and if the driver takes its time to raise back up out of the box instead of just going straight back up, that's how you know that there is some form of air leak. So, what I'm going to do now is there are 12 screws around here. I, my drill is in the garage, so I've got the fun job of doing all of this by hand. Luckily, these screws don't have a great deal of thread on them, so it doesn't take too long. So I'm going to quickly do this now, and then I'll return once I've removed all 12 of these screws. So it does appear that once you have that initial crack out of the way, it's very, very easy. Look, you just go like that, twist it once, and then I can quite literally just roll my fingers around and untighten the screw. It's quite an easy speaker to pull apart. All right, so I've now got all 12 of the screws removed. Six of them are just chilling over here. I'll stick these on the grill so I don't lose them, and the other six are still in there. I'm just gonna try lifting this speaker up from the edge somewhere, just like I'm doing right now. And it seems like the speaker's still pretty stuck in there. I'm just gonna check that these screws over here are definitely fully undone. There's another one coming out. Uh, this screw up the top here is definitely loose. That comes out like so. It just appears a lot harder than what it used to to open. I literally used to just pull it by this corner right here and out would come, out, come, out would come the front of the speaker. I don't know why that took me so much to say. I'm gonna try maybe just prying this little flathead screwdriver somewhere. I can't lift it from there, I don't think. No, so I need to try and get it in between the face of the speaker and the actual frame that goes around the outside. I'm trying to do this without pulling on any of the drivers, uh, like the passive radiators, because I don't want to tear any of the surrounds and make this leak any worse than what it already is. <sighs> I'll be back once I've removed the front. All right, there we go. All I did was wedge the screwdriver in like this, push it back towards the center, and up comes the side of the speaker. I'm gonna try and grab this now while it's pretty loose, and there we go. You can see there's just a bit of foam around the edges here, which is what indeed actually seals the driver in the box, and then we're greeted with the backs of the woofers. So we can see that the left and the right uh, driver for full range are in fact enclosed. The low frequency driver, of course, is exposed because it needs to get signal to the passive radiators. We can see that there's a little bit of metal here in the passive radiators that sig uh, signals to me uh, that there is added weight to tune the frequency of the enclosure a bit lower. Also with that, on the inside of the box, we have the circuit board up the top here, which would just have the power switches on it, as well as that, this is really hard to hold, as well as that, we have our main amplifier board just down here and a battery, uh, which is what did come undone. And I'm just checking that is definitely still perfectly secure. So what we're gonna do, there's four screws holding this woofer on the back here. 
I'm gonna remove those four screws. It's gonna be quite difficult for me to do because of course the um, magnet on the back of the speaker isn't magnetically shielded, which means every single time I put my screwdriver anywhere near it, it sticks to it. So it's always gonna make it a little bit more interesting to do. Nevertheless, what I'll do is I will remove these four screws, which appear to be slightly, ever so slightly different to the other screws on the front of the speaker. So I will separate them so they don't get mixed up with it. I'll just continue to remove this and I'll be back once I've removed all four screws. Okay, so I now have all four screws for the subwoofer removed. I'm gonna pull this driver out and I can see that there is really nowhere for the air to escape around this foam around the edge here. I'm um, looking at the plastic over here. There appears to be no sort of cracks or anything that would be allowing for air to flow out of the cabinet. I can't actually see anywhere that would be giving me the issue. I'm gonna take a quick uh, closer look at this and see if I can identify anything that would possibly lead to leaking air. Uh, other than that, the subwoofer driver itself is quite a neat little thing. Have a look at that. Quite a chunky magnet on the back. It's actually a decent feeling driver. Um, yeah, it's pretty damn cool. So, I don't know. I'll just play with this for a sec. See if I can figure out where this air leak is. If not, looks like I'll be just sticking it back in just like it is right now. All right, so I've come to the conclusion that the air can't possibly really be leaking from around the driver. I'll just do one last check around the surround, make sure there's no holes or tears in the surround because that could possibly lead to air leaks, uh, but it appears like there is not. So what I'm gonna do is bring down the driver back down and put it inside the enclosure, just how it was. Maybe I'll rotate it 90 degrees. Hopefully that still allows the box to close up perfectly. And with that rotated 90 degrees, I'll put the four screws back in. And then what we'll do is we'll put the box back together, tighten those screws up and see if that's fixed the air leak. If not, we're gonna have to resort to silicon. All right, so I've now got the subwoofer driver pre-installed back into the box. And I've noticed this over here inside the enclosure, this square right here, and I'm gonna call them out for it. I'm not really calling them out because I can understand why they've done it, but they've done the typical white van speaker scan thing and just added, well, at this stage is what I'm believing, to be an unnecessary, completely pointless weight in the bottom of the box here, just to make the speaker feel heavier. So I'm gonna try and remove this. I might need a little bit of prying with a screwdriver. If I can get this out of the box, a little bit of cracking, not really too keen on doing that, but we'll see if we can get it out. I believe this is just an unnecessary weight. Indeed, it actually is. Have a look at this. In the bottom of the box, there is just a completely dead piece of metal, dead weight, doing absolutely nothing other than adding maybe 80, 90 grams of weight to the overall box. I'm actually surprised to see that inside of a speaker enclosure that's really of this caliber. But nonetheless, there is added weight inside of the box to try and make it feel more solid. So. I'm gonna somehow try and line these glue lines back up to try and get this back in the box exactly where it just was. Okay, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Screw this back in. But yeah, I just thought I'd quickly highlight the fact that there is added weight in the bottom of the box. I'm currently having a really tough time getting these screws back in just because I'm being a bit stupid about it. But unfortunately, yeah, so you can see how hard this actually is to get these screws back in. Nonetheless though, it's actually quite interesting to see that they've added weight in the bottom of the box because in doing so, they're actually probably increasing their production costs of these units just simply by adding a sheet of mild steel in the bottom. I'd say this is probably uh, six to eight gauge. It's probably about four millimeters thick. Uh, it's, yeah, again, probably adding about 80 to 100 grams or maybe 60 to 80 grams of unnecessary weight to the enclosure, which I mean, if you wanna lighten the speaker, go inside and just take that out. Again, I'm having a really tough time with these screws. Uh, they are very hard to get in because of their short length, but nonetheless, I am actually managing to get a couple of them in. And once I've done that, well, it'll be all about enclosing this speaker and hoping that it does not leak air anymore because that has been driving me insane. So much so that I, completely changed my bathroom stereo 
to that other amplifier I previously got. So we've now got that weight in the bottom. We're gonna put the speaker back together. We'll just check one last time that there's no uh, rattles inside and uh, I've just spotted a big issue on the back of the woofer driver here. One of the cables has snapped off. I'm not sure if my phone is picking that up, but one of the cables has snapped off the woofer driver. This job has become more of a pain in the ass than I uh, expected it to be. So I've really quickly switched cameras because my phone is what is playing music. Nonetheless though, it appears that the leak is 90% gone. It's still slightly audible. However, it is much, much better than what it was to the point where I might actually start using this again because I won't be extremely bothered by that annoying sound. But that's been my video trying to repair this speaker. If you've liked the video, make sure you chuck a like on it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for whatever reason. And with that being said, guys, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget the links to purchase this speaker are in the video description. It's an affiliate link, so it helps the channel out a lot. But with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.